Hi, this week what we're going to talk about is mechanisms of longevity and how calorie restriction and fasting as a strategy can help. And it's coming right up. We talked in our previous video about theories of aging and how we see aging more as a trade-off between growth and longevity. That is just like a car. If you drive your car really hard, rev the engine all the time, go really fast is great, but it comes at the expense at the expense of how long that car is going to last. So you can go really fast or the car can last longer in good shape, but you can't really do both at the same time. And our bodies are much the same. That is the same mechanisms that underlie growth also underlie longevity. If you do a lot of growing, then you're going to perhaps live a little less long. So therefore, one of the ways that we can maximize longevity is to slow down our growth and go more into a sort of repair and maintenance mode. And one of the most reliable ways to do this from a scientific standpoint is calorie restriction. And studies on animals have consistently shown that eating fewer calories extends the life. And this goes back to the 1930s when pioneering work by Dr. Clive McKay showed that on rats, if you reduce the amount of calories, rats live longer. So he compared several groups of animals. One of them, he let eat as much as they wanted. And another group of animals, he really cut back what they could eat. They were calorie restricted. And he found that those calorie restricted rats lived much longer to the surprise of most of the people in the field with the important proviso that you have to avoid malnutrition. If you restrict calories too much, in fact, then you get growth retardation, you get poor development, and you don't live as long. However, studies then were extended to other animals, including worms, flies, and other mammals as well. In 1939, he said, retardation of growth by diet, complete except for calories, affords a means of producing very old animals. So making sure you get enough vitamins, minerals, proteins, healthy fats, but not taking too much is a great way to extend life, but not only life, but health. That is, what they saw was fewer chronic diseases, including things like cancer, chronic diseases like kidney disease, and so on. The problem, of course, with humans is how do you calorie restrict them when people generally have an abundance of food? And that was um, the easiest way they thought to do that was by intermittent fasting. In 1946, a lot of researchers were saying, well, it's actually the easiest and most practical solution is to simply limit the eating opportunities rather than expect people to eat until they are not quite full because that's not the normal way we eat. When we eat, we eat until we're full if there's enough food. So it's a lot easier if you restrict the number of times you eat rather than try to rely on willpower. Think of it this way. Is it easier to say, well, yeah, I, I shouldn't be eating ice cream, so I'm gonna eat ice cream only once a week. Or is it easier to take a lick of ice cream with every single meal, but stop yourself even though the whole uh, scoop is there ready for you to eat? Well, that's really hard and it's gonna take a lot of willpower. So really, it's a lot easier to do intermittent fasting. So it's a way to restrict the number of calories in a sort of socially acceptable and easier manner. In terms of the mechanisms of disease, there's a lot of ways that calorie restriction actually can make sure that we're healthier as long as we're giving enough nutrients. One way is that it decreases body fat. And we know that increased body weight and body fatness increases the risk of a number of diseases, particularly these days when we're faced with type 2 diabetes, heart disease, strokes, and cancers, all of which can be related to obesity. The second major way is a decreased modulation of cell survival. 
also known as apoptosis. And apoptosis is a mechanism of controlled or programmed cell death. And that sounds really bad if your cells are dying, but in fact, it's actually a very good thing because what you're doing is you're marking certain cells for removal. And those are the cells that are not going to be as functional. Maybe they're a little junky, they're a little broken down. If you take out the old broken down cells, then you have a chance to regenerate them. And that's a process of rejuvenation. So this apoptosis can be extremely important. And if you don't have enough, perhaps you get these other degenerative diseases, chronic diseases and things like cancer. The third way is decreased insulin resistance or hyperinsulinemia. That is, insulin is a very important nutrient sensor and also a very important growth factor. So therefore, as we decrease amount, the amount of insulin in our bodies, we see a number of benefits in terms of longevity. That is, this, uh, you know, this seesaw between growth and longevity, we want to tilt ourselves in longevity. When we're young, of course, it doesn't matter so much and we want to tilt towards growth. Number four, we see an increase in anabolic hormones. So not only do you get this sort of destructive processes such as apoptosis, but you also get the regeneration, which are the anabolic hormones such as growth hormones. When you don't eat such as during fasting, you're going to increase certain hormones and among them is growth hormone. And a lack of growth hormone can lead to both sarcopenia, that is a loss of muscle in old age, as well as osteoporosis. So this growth hormone is very important and one of the ways you can increase it is by fasting. Another way that calorie restriction leads to increased health span is a decreased inflammation. The inflammatory response is the response in our bodies to any sort of injury or infection. It's like when you get a cut, you'll see it gets all inflamed, it's all red, and that sort of internal uh, inflammation can be extremely damaging. When we don't uh, have the sort of increased uh, calories, our body tends to decrease the inflammatory response and therefore we're not gonna get as much of that sort of internal fire, that damage that's happening from the inflammation. Another way that calorie restrictions helps, particularly with fasting, is the process called autophagy or mitophagy. And this too is a catabolic process. It's a process of breaking down just like apoptosis, but apoptosis is a way of breaking down cells. Autophagy is a way of breaking down subcellular components called organelles. And mitophagy is a way to break down mitochondria, which is the energy uh, producing part of the cell. And by breaking it down, you actually start to the process of rejuvenation. And in fact, is very important for longevity and another important way that calorie restriction and fasting can contribute. Another way we talk about is hormesis, which is that a small amount of something that's harmful can actually be beneficial. Just like things like exercise can be beneficial, it's a form of stress. If you have too much, it's very bad for you, but a little bit makes your body respond and get stronger. So calorie restriction and fasting do the same thing. It puts a stress on the body and it increases the ability of your body to handle this sort of stress. That is, if your body needs a metabolic flexibility between uh, fat oxidation and um, carbohydrate oxidation, that calorie restriction is gonna make it easier because your body's gonna have to do it. So it's a form of hormesis, that is a little bit of stress on the body to make it stronger. And the final way that calorie restriction can really uh, improve lifespan and health span is the decrease in oxidative stress or free radicals. We talked in our previous video about free radicals and these are substances which are missing an electron and this makes it very damaging to the body. And in fact, you can take antioxidants to counteract that, but when you have this decreased inflammation that you see with calorie restriction, you're also going to see this decreased oxidative stress because your body's going into more of this maintenance and repair phase instead of growth. 
So there's a lot of different ways that calorie restriction can lead to increased longevity, but also increased health. Certain uh, cultures do that naturally. They naturally eat very little, for example, or in the case of Okinawa, they have a tradition where they will stop eating before they're full. They will make a conscious decision to eat only until they're 80% full, not 100% full. And in fact, those are some of the longest lived people in the world. Another way that is very good is intermittent fasting, and this is what most people have done. If you look at most religions and most cultures, they have a period of fasting, whether it's once a year or a whole month at a time or certain parts of the year or a few days at a time. It's all different, but all of them have the same sorts of tradition that yes, food is available, but for a period of time, I am going to not eat that food. Not because it's fun, it's not fun, but because it's something that's really healthy to do. It's considered often and called a cleanse or a detoxification or purification, something like that, because that's in fact what it's done. If you look back at the mechanisms of action, what you're in fact doing is clearing the body out of the excess fat, the excess glucose, trying to decrease the inflammation, um, get rid of some of the free radicals, decrease the insulin, decrease growth, and go into this sort of uh, repair mode. And you do that once a year or every few days, that's what's important to do, and that's what it means to stay healthy. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you learned a little bit of something. If you did, maybe share it with a friend. Have a look at our previous video on theories of aging if you want a little background on what we just talked about. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week.